Hi guys, Dave at the Humble Trekker Channel. How are you all doing out there? It's uh, blowing a gale, it's sleeting, but I'm going to try and knock out a video anyway because it's been a while since I've published anything on YouTube. But it'll just be a general discussion here about flashlights. I've got a bunch of flashlights which I've got waiting on the taxi rank to review, but before I go into the review, I thought I'd just go over a few basic principles uh, to help you choosing a flashlight uh, and using it. Now, when you go into a store, you look online at uh, flashlights or torches, as we say in the UK, but that really confuses a lot of people. They think I'm talking about, a, you know, one of those things they had in medieval times. So I say, I keep on saying flashlight, even though it's an Americanism. Uh, when you look online, you look in a store, you see two main, um, what should we say, criteria for your light. One is the number of lumens it produces, and one is the range it reaches out to. Now, you don't want to go just look at the lumens and think that's going to give you the strength of the light because you can have lights with exactly the same lumens but they actually reach out to a completely different distance. The amount of lumens produced by the flashlight gives you the total quantity, the total volume of light that is produced by, in this day and age, we're nearly always talking about an LED uh, light emitting source. So the, the lumens is a total quantity of light produced by the LED. And the range, normally measured in meters, is the total distance that that light will reach out to. Now the total lumens is not always reflected in the total range of the light. The range of your flashlight is determined by how the beam of light is focused. And that focusing is created by the reflector, which is behind the LED. So that, that coned semicircular device very shiny which is behind it and the more shine the shinier that is uh, the more highly reflective it is the more it focuses the beam will determine how far that light actually reaches out to so it actually focuses the light source into a long rod of light which stretches out into the distance alternatively you can have more of a flood flood being the opposite or complementary term to range or reach of your beam and flood is when the light comes out in a wider cone and that is also determined by the reflector behind the LED, but also to a great extent, the lens in front. If that is a diffusing lens, that will produce light which is, spreads out in a wide area directly in front of the flashlight, instead of the alternative, focusing the light very, as a point, to a long distance away. We can take two lights from Olight. O Light is the name of the company. It's a Chinese manufacturer that actually produce uh, some very, very good lights for uh, medium price and upwards. Very good quality. One being the Olight M3XS and one being the SR Mini. Now the SR Mini has got a lumens of 3,200. The M3XS has got a lumens rating of 1,200. Now, so the, uh, the MX3S has got 2,000 lumens less than the SR Mini. But the range of the M3XS is actually 1,200 meters, 1 1.2 kilometers, that will produce a beam. But the SR Mini, only a range of 268 meters. So you can see the range of a light has got very little to do with the amount of lumens. Ah, that's not a good thing to say. It's got a lot to do with the amount of lumens, but it's got most to do with the shape of the reflector and the shape of the lens in front of the LED. What you also want to watch out for, guys, is the lumen ratings given to you by manufacturers in the marketing material, because it's not always equal across the board. A company can say they, their light producers a lumens rating of, say, 1,000 lumens. But what's important is how long it produces that 1,000 lumens for. Now, I don't want to get into naming any names, but as a general uh, rule of thumb, the cheaper Chinese manufactured lights they will give you a certain lumen rating but when they're independently tested that lumen rating is either completely wrong so i say it's a thousand but it's only actually giving you 800 or it gives you the rated thousand but only for a matter of minutes i'm going to show you some independent test results of a lamp that's known as the boruit bj 5000 which is advertised by the manufacturer and various websites where you can buy it and stores that you can buy it as 5,000 lumens. Now this is what we would describe as 
cheap-ass Chinese light. So for a low price, this lamp is promising you 5,000 lumens. And the question is, why would you go for a more expensive light from a quality manufacturer like Olight or from a Luminite when you can get 5,000 lumens headlamp from this company, Borit, for 10, 20, less than $30. Well, there's one very good reason, because it's not a 5,000 lumen light. It's a complete marketing scam. Supposedly 5,000 lumens. And you can see on this graph that actually the maximum lumens produced by this lamp is only 516, a tenth of the advertised 5,000s. Coming down further, they also did a test on supposedly that the battery, the 18650 in this battery, was a 4,000 milliamp hour, milliamp hour battery. And they tested it, and it actually came out to only be a capacity of 1,218 milliamp hours. Absolutely nowhere near the specified specifications for this light. I'll show you a really useful application which is available on the Veo Store website. It's Veo Store, V-A-L-O store.se. And let me translate this to English. What they have here, they've got their own independent testing laboratory, which uses a LabSphere SS2 light measurement equipment. Here's a picture of it. And you so they do all their own independent measurements, so you can actually come and look on this page and then compare that to the specifications that are marketed on web, different websites or wherever you're considering purchasing the light. So if for an example we come in, we choose a Luminite Max Mode Compass. So this is a headlight, which looks like this. It's uh, completely self-contained, 18650 in there. Let's play music. So this is rated as 1,200 humans at maximum uh, setting. And you can see just at the start when you turn it on for the first few minutes, this is lumens up the left hand side, minutes along the bottom, gives you over 1,200 and it settles down until for almost 60 minutes you get a full 1,200 lumens. So, uh, you can compare, you can put more than one lamp on the same graph. So for example, if I choose a um, Phoenix HL55 in turbo mode, and the Phoenix HL55 looks like this, so it's another self-contained light, which has got a maximum light of 900 lumens as specified by the manufacturer. And you can see well, now this is where you get a difference between different manufacturers. Phoenix, they've advertised it as 900 lumens, but what you can actually see is so you get 900 lumens for basically for one to two minutes. Within two minutes, the light flow, the light volume in lumens has dropped down to 400. So here you go. This gives you an honest picture of the true specifications of lights. Check it out if you want to get into it in more detail at the valostore.se. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope if you didn't already know all this stuff, that's a, just a quick explanation of lumens, range for your flashlights, and a little bit of a, a warning that you shouldn't always take the statistics and the, uh, the values you get from the manufacturers and from the market material at face value. If you're a subscriber, thanks for your support. If you're not already a subscriber, check out more of my videos. If you like what you see, smash down that subscriber button and I'll see you next time.